Hello, my name is Judy Lee. I'm a graduate student in Lisa Konafagu's lab, and today I would like to talk about our project with multi-frequency AM harmonic motion imaging guided focus ultrasound in an in vivo breast cancer mouse model for monitoring and assessment of lesion formation. So harmonic motion imaging is a radiation force-based ultrasound elastography technique that can assess mechanical properties of tissues and monitor tissue ablation by using an amplitude modulated radiation force, which produces an internal, internal vibration at a specific frequency. So some of the advantages of HMI for FUS monitoring is that it is an all ultrasound system so that it uses the same form of imaging as used for therapy. And also because of this frequency specific displacement, HMI can be performed simultaneously during FUS treatment and with reduced noise. Our lab has previously demonstrated single frequency AM HMI guided FUS in which we were able to monitor the changes in displacement that occurred during FUS ablation, which is marked by an increase in displacement followed by a subsequent decrease in displacement, which indicates lesion stiffening. Our lab has also found that lower and higher AM frequencies could improve contrast in soft and stiff tissues respectively. So the aims of this project were to monitor and assess FUS ablation with HMI guided FUS in an ex vivo canine liver and in vivo, in vivo breast cancer mouse model and to assess multi-frequency HMI for improved lesion contrast. Our specimens included an ex vivo canine liver and in vivo 41 orthotopic breast cancer mouse model that was imaged and treated on the same day, either 16 or nine days post injection. The experimental setup consisted of three stages pre-treatment 2D raster scanned HMI imaging, treatment monitoring during FUS treatment in which FUS was performed at a single spot continuously with simultaneous HMI imaging and post-treatment 2D raster scan HMI imaging. Our transducer setup consisted of two confocal transducers, a focus transducer at a center frequency of four megahertz and an imaging transducer at a center frequency of 15.6 megahertz. A 3D positioner was used for raster scanning and respiratory gating was used to acquire HMI between breath holes during pre and post treatment imaging. RF data was beamformed using a GPU based beamforming method. Uh, the FUS beam interference was filtered using notch filters. Axial displacement was calculated using a 1D normalized cross correlation method and bandpass filtering was used to ext extract the oscillatory frequency component. Displacement amplitudes were calculated from mean peak to peak displacement and single point displacement amplitude arrays were overlaid together to produce a 2D displacement map. Multi-frequency AM displacement maps were processed by first normalizing each of the single AM frequency displacement maps in which maps were normalized respective to the maximum displacement inside of the map. The maps were then averaged together point by point to produce a combined multi-frequency AM displacement map. Contrast was calculated as the ratio between displacement inside the focal region versus in the background. And in this study, we showed that multi-frequency AM improved contrast by 8.2% compared to single-frequency single AM in the liver FUS treated region. So for our ablation monitoring results in ex vivo canine liver, HMI imaging showed an initial increase in displacement followed by a subsequent decrease in displacement during treatment, which is indicative of ablation and lesion formation. Thermocouple measurements in an ex vivo canine liver showed a temperature rise to 50 degrees Celsius using the parameters used in this study. Our results were corroborated by HMI imaging results pre and post treatment in which a region of lower displacement was detected post treatment in the focal area that was not detected pre treatment. The percent difference in contrast comparing pre and post treatment was 28.5%. Our results were further validated by gross pathology in which we detected a region of around two millimeters in the treated area and an H and E which showed the presence of ablated cells in the target area. Ablation monitoring results in in vivo mice also show an in initial increase in HMI displacement followed by a subsequent decrease in displacement. This result is again validated by HMI imaging pre and post treatment where we see a decrease in displacement in the treated area following treatment. HNE validated our results showing a region of ablated cells in the treated area for all four mice. Finally, we have also conducted a negative control in which we monitored FUS treatment without ablation using lower intensities of FUS compared to the previous slide in which I showed FUS ablation in in vivo mice, but using the same parameters as in the ex vivo liver study, our treatment monitoring methods showed an increase in HMI displacement during treatment without a subsequent decrease in displacement, which is indicative of a lack of lesion formation or incomplete FUS ablation. Again, this result is further validated by comparing HMI imaging pre and post treatment in which we see very little difference in displacement between the two and HNE, which confirmed that cells in the treated area were not in fact ablated. So in conclusion, 
In this study, we have shown simultaneous FUS treatment monitoring in canine liver ex vivo and in murine mammary tumor in vivo with HMI-guided FUS, as well as pre and post treatment assessment with HMI. HMI was capable of differentiating between complete and incomplete FUS ablation in tumors in a breast cancer mouse model in vivo. Interestingly, we found a lack of ablation in mice in vivo using the same FUS parameters used to ablate ex vivo canine liver. Additionally, multi-frequency AM HMI imaging showed higher contrast compared to single frequency AM HMI. In the future, we would like to perform in vivo versus ex vivo mouse temperature measurements during FUS ablation, and we would like to perform a tumor debulking study after HMI guided FUS ablation. I'd like to acknowledge the NIH for funding our study, the NSF for funding my graduate studies, and the Ultrasound Elasticity Imaging Lab at Columbia. Thank you for your attention.